Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with Anvil Industries video of the month. That's right, I get to make a video for Anvil Industries every single month, they sponsor a video and I basically get to play around with their Patreon releases each month, put some awesome miniatures together and get them painted up. In last month's video, we did the awesome Astronaut pack and it was also the first month that they decided to basically have an add-on for each month the following month to incentivize you guys to stick with them with your Patreon subscriptions. Like I said last month, we had the astronaut stuff and this month, as well as the awesome desert house style miniatures you're getting as a full release, you're getting an extra bonus pack for the uh, astronaut stuff that we got last month. These are very exciting for me. I really did enjoy the astronaut stuff. I've wanted to play a bunch of miniature agnostic games based around kind of space. I need more traditional space. I want to play Space Station Zero and games like this. And this extra pack allows you to build quite a thematic banner bear, which I think is amazing. Who doesn't want to land on a crazy asteroid or a crazy moon and plant their, their home banner down? You also get some jump packs or big giant jet packs, but they look like the official NASA ones, which I think is awesome. So that's just an extra reason to stick with these guys. Now, this month's pack is all about desert houses. And by that, I mean June. I don't know whether I'm supposed to say that or not, but they've made some awesome June compatible miniatures. And I'm going to build a couple of them here today and then I'm going to get one of them painted up and see how they look. I'm very excited about this. Dune is one of my favorite movies, including the original 1984 version. I think it's one of the birth uh, concepts that gave us Warhammer 40,000. So uh, I'm very happy to support that in any way I possibly can. So hopefully you can stick around and enjoy this video. Before I get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Without you guys, I cannot continue making videos like this. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you're interested in getting involved with that, there's links in the description below. All right, without further ado, let's get in and paint some awesome miniatures. Okay, so these are some of the characters that I have printed out from this month's thing. The June side picked one female character holding a sniper rifle. And I picked one male character having a normal rifle. And I built them with the two different designs of helmets. I also built the character that's meant to represent kind of the uh, Isaac character from the movie. Obviously played he played uh, Duke Leto in the movie. So I decided to build him with two swords. And then Spike's character from the 1984 version with that awesome haircut. I couldn't help but obviously print him off. I'm going to paint him in my own time for my own kind of pleasure. In the next couple of days he's just such a nice piece. So yeah, I got the models all sprayed, my traditional spray of black and then grey sear. And then I'm going to go into the process of painting it. Now, Dune armor or Dune costumes or whatever way you want to look at it was actually quite a difficult thing to kind of pour through the internet and try and find what colors they're supposed to be. Even when you look at stills from the movie, it's actually incredibly difficult to try and figure out what color the armor is. In certain lights, it looks silver, in certain lights, it looks black, and in certain lights, it looks white. Which is insane to think about an armor that it could possibly be those three colors. But, it, but it's so difficult to figure it out. Now, the Anvil Industries on their Instagram account, I noticed that they had suggested that they were white. Maybe I was thinking that they were following the process of kind of shying away from doing a little bit from their IP and doing their own color scheme, but after numerous searches over on uh, the old google i did in fact find someone who was doing a cosplay suit of armor and then i could finally see what the armor color was meant to be and it is this beautiful kind of really dark white stain it's, it's a really hard color to like picture so i decided to go with the soul blight gray shade as the starting point for the armor which may seem like a bizarre thing but it's the color that I actually started with when I was painting my Pegasus Knights for my Bretonians, those white feathers, which I didn't want to try and paint pure white. And ever since then, whenever I've needed to paint something that's just kind of a little bit off-white, I start by going with a coat of Soul Blight Grey, and then I kind of usually I work up with some palette colors from there. Basilicanum Grey was used as a contrast for his undersuit. Obviously, some of the sculpts have this long bit of extra fabric on the back, almost like a little half cape. And some characters do not. I think it's a sign of rank in the movies, but I'm not 100% sure. I definitely love that look. For some reason, it always reminds me of stuff like Samurai's. The extra length around the waist and then obviously carrying a sword is very cool. One of my favorite aspects of Dune has always been the use of swords. Having said that, the idea behind it is that personal shields exist and most firearms are just completely negated by this fact. Therefore, short blades and swords have become all common again meaning that there is these awesome kind of knightly characters kind of stomping around. And I always thought swords were cooler than guns anyway. 
Black Templar was then used for things like the boots. You can only see the boots a little bit. There's um, kind of like gaiters on that I'm using that uh, are the same color as his overalls. And then he has armor panels going down the front of his shin and then covering the most of the front of his foot. So you got to kind of work around that. Then obviously I decided to do all the straps that hold on his armors with black as well. Just kind of like a nice black tactical webbing. Sometimes it's hard to pick out these uh, details on such a fine print like this. And that's where I think the kind of spraying them chaos black and then spraying them gray seer lightly comes into its own. The details tend to jump off the miniature a lot more, meaning it's a lot easier to try and find the different areas and paint them appropriately. Small bit of gullum and flesh for his face and hands, working around his beard, obviously. Now, the majority of the characters in the files have a... How, well, everyone has a helmet option if you so choose. And most of the characters in the movies tend to wear their helmets. So if you so choose, you don't want to paint any faces. That's no problem whatsoever. You can just put the helmets on them all. The helmets should be easy enough to paint as they have all got these big black visors going down the front, which I think is pretty cool. I've gone back to Black Templar, one after I'd done the face, just to black in his beard as... The Duke Leto character has a full head of black hair and a big black beard. I also painted the vibro blades, what I'm calling them, black as well. And then gave the handles uh, just a red. Maybe the red was a bad choice, but I kind of always kind of lean back into that samurai look. The red handle, the, the kind of wrapped look. I'm not sure what color the actual one is supposed to be, but I did like the red. Some null oil was then brought in and I shaded down the entire miniature with this. You may think that I'm crazy for uh, shading all these brighter colors with black but I do like to pull all the tones together and I always like the shadows being quite dark and then when I go into highlight I kind of go to the extreme and then that'll have the miniature kind of popping for me it's something that I will enjoy now while the miniature was drying from its shade I also decided to base it and I went with the desert scheme so desert sand from K Interactive I gave it a sepia wash and then dry brush it with bone in case anyone was wondering how I did the sand and then just did the rim at black. And after that it was time to start layering up that kind of pale off-white armor and for this I went for Pallid Witch Flesh. Now Pallid Witch Flesh, as beautiful a colour as it is, is quite weak in pigment. So I did decide to go with two thin coats across this armour. Being very careful to try and get neat and tidy lines. Now, did I get this right? No, and to be honest, later on in the video, I don't even think I recorded it. I did go back in and kind of black line around the armor again after all the other stages were done, just to neaten and kind of separate the, the brown web or the gray webbing from the white armor panels. You can see it's a little bit rough. And later on, I'll let you know the jump where you can see that it's gotten a lot neater. And that's where I went back in and just tidied it up a little bit. I didn't want to create any kind of rough uh, panels with the white so I was more concerned about getting a smooth coat on white as opposed to kind of being worried about the kind of the bits around it. Mechanic is standard grey, one of my favourite greys, nice and dark. I'm using that to highlight up all of the grey fabric on him from his uh, flight suit, jumpsuit, undersuit, whatever you want to call it. I always do like using this technique and I've used this color quite a lot on other miniatures. It looks well, it's easy to do and obviously it doesn't draw too much attention. So obviously the primary focus on a model like this is his pale armor. If I had gone for some gaudy color on the fabric then obviously you wouldn't notice the armor as much as you did. But I take my time, I follow the, the, the folds, highlight it correctly I think. And leave it looking semi sharp, semi cool. Having seen at the beginning of this video what additional stuff they gave the astronaut pack last month or the NASA pack, I can't remember what it's called. If you did miss last month's when you are curious, by the way, it is all on their My Mini Factory, their digital thing. You can just buy all the older packs. I wonder what they're going to give us for these guys next month. It's going to be an interesting thing to see. I have not yet seen June part two, even though it is out. So I'm kind of kicking myself and hoping I do get a chance to uh, get some of that painted, painted, seen very soon. Hopefully they'll give me some more hints and clues as to what they may include with the bonus pack for next month. Anvil Industries is actually quite a fantastic thing for you guys to look at as 
we are moving into an era where more and more creators make miniature agnostic games. And these guys are so diverse in the kits that they have. And the majority of the kits that they do do are all interchangeable. It's the same kind of wrist joint for pretty much all their weapons. So you can go back 10 sets and go, oh, I really like that gun. Or I really like that guy's helmet. Or I really like those legs. And then mix and match all the different parts to create units or squads or whatever you want for each and every different style of miniature game, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And that's one of the things that... Uh, I find most interesting is to go back and forth between different sets, mix them together and see what kind of crazy characters I can make. I spend a little bit of time highlighting the face and then I call that guy pretty much finished. I've got kids left, flesh left for a few final highlights. Easy enough miniatures to paint as they are only basically three primary colors. We have the armor color, the fabric color, some leather color, and then the, the usual stuff. You've got skin and hair and stuff like that. It's the kind of thing where you could paint a squad of these guys for a game in absolutely no time at all in an evening and have some really nice characters to uh see you can see that my collection of anvil industries miniatures is now growing i do keep them all together in their own separate little case and i will show you those in a moment and as you can see i have quite a few miniatures printed off now whether it be my stargate sg1 gang whether it be my jaffa whether it be my bank heist guys, some uh, crazy Spetsnaz style characters, really like them, some SWAT officers. Obviously the NASA guys are in there as well, the astronauts. I have some uh, Imperial characters that could be used very well for Inquisition or Agents for Warhammer 40,000. It just, it's crazy the variety you get, like from one month getting guys for a bank heist and then the next month getting guys from Stargate or Battlestar Galactica. You just, there's so much, it's awesome. Obviously, I'm going to have to get myself another case as my collection of miniatures is growing a little bit bigger than expected. I really, realistically, only have to print and paint one miniature each month for these guys, but I tend to overdo it and print a bunch of nice miniatures that I want. And then it just creates a backlog of more miniatures that I'm going to have to paint in the near future. Here is the finished uh, character that I did for this month. I really am pleased with how he looks. The nice pale and pallid armor, I think, works a treat. And I cannot wait to... Uh, see what they have in store for both this set next month and also for some whatever next month's going to be by itself very exciting times show you have a couple of the painted miniatures i've already done for anvil industries and each and every one of the miniatures you're about to see does have a full video for it as well and it's all just i don't know it's exciting it's a nice break from kind of monotonously painting armies rank and file unit after unit is the same thing i get to do loads of awesome very varied characters okay guys and there we have it one of the miniatures from anvil industries pledge this month a june miniature is now painted up and ready for a game i really liked how this guy turned out i really liked the set of uh miniatures heads torsos that they gave you and i really did like the extra talk of giving us a uh, spikes character from the uh 1984 version that's just an extra little throw on on top of that as you can see i printed that guy out and i'm going to print him for him or i'm going to paint him for my own love and enjoyment in the next couple of days Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. Make sure you check out uh, Anvil Industries uh, Discord or sorry, Patreon. I will also link that down below yourself if you want to get any of these awesome miniatures. And you can also check their My Mini Factory for all of their backlog of awesome stuff as well. I will leave that linked below as well. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of this video. Make sure you give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and ask me any questions you want in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video.